How's it going, everyone? This is your astrology horoscope for Monday, June 17th, 2024. I'm astrologer Alex Skiles, and welcome to the Moon Base. Hope you guys are doing great. It's good to be here with all of you, as usual. Happy Monday. So, uh, I just want to say that my reading sale is going to be over on the 21st, and I have three slots left. So, if you want it, I would get it now. I'd get it here within the next few days, because it's the 16th. So, um, I just wanted to remind you of that. So, I think coming into this Monday, this is interesting. So, Venus and Mercury both have ingressed into Cancer now, which is great. You know, things have been so wild here in Gemini season, especially at the end of Gemini season, because we're... The sun's here at 26 degrees. So we're at the end here. So we have the sun at 26, and now we have Venus and Mercury both together about to make their conjunction in the sign of Cancer, both at zero degrees here. So this is what's great. Today, Mercury and Venus are going to make their conjunction. And what are, what, what are the odds that Mercury and Venus were going to conjunct in the sign of Cancer because we've been having all all of these massive conjunctions since April, really. In Aries, we had a lot of conjunctions. In Taurus, we had an abundance of conjunctions. In Gemini, you know, a lot of conjunctions. So now in Cancer, this is where Mercury and Venus finally meet. Are here in a water sign. So I, I think the energy is going to start to. Not mellow out, but ease off a little bit, especially mentally. You know, especially Mercury being out of Gemini, Mercury now in Cancer. Our thoughts can flow more. We can, we, with Mercury and Gemini going through that transit here and it conjuncting with Jupiter and the Sun um, during Gemini season, I think there's a, there's a lot of things that were unclear. That we had to really mentalize and be able to connect. You know, since Mercury crossed and conjuncted with Uranus and went through all of Gemini here and then squared Neptune, it's it's been quite a quite a quite a show. You know, and I think a, a mental spectacle, so to say. So now with all this all of this new understanding, all of these new connections. Um, and this new perspective of being able to step outside of just our persona and our basic needs, right? And being able to look at the, the, the picture um, from a more objective place. Now, with that new understanding, our thoughts can start to flow more. And I think, too, <laughs> what's, what's interesting is that the moon is going to be squaring Pluto as it comes into Scorpio here Monday morning. And this moon will make a trine over to Venus and Mercury as Mercury and Venus are ingressing into Cancer. So, you know, our deepest desires in a partnership um, need to be communicated. And I think today is one of these days where it's like these deepest desires you know, and that passion in that romantic relationship starts with communication. Like, these are my needs. These are my desires. You know, these are also the things I need to address. You know, being willing to be open about certain issues, especially associated with traumatic issues, unconscious issues, past life issues, childhood issues. Being able to communicate these things in a partnership, especially with, you know, this hard angle from Venus and Mercury to Pluto while the moon is squaring, you know, I think whatever things just haven't connected and what has felt disconnected, I think we can communicate about these things more openly and more emotionally and more compassionate and empathetically and understand each other uh, in a more sensitive way. I think the sensitivity is really going to start to increase because we came from such a such a mentalized uh, transit with Mercury and Venus all through Gemini and the sun's still in Gemini so but we're at the end here so it's important to think to remember is that you know 
All the all of this stuck energy, even though Mars is in Taurus, Mars is on its way to Uranus. The moon today will oppose Mars for the first time since Mars is in Taurus. And this is after the moon is going to square Pluto. And this is, you know, today I think this moon in Scorpio is going to activate that Mars-Pluto square. Especially with Mars being the ruling planet of Scorpio, traditionally. Okay, Pluto now being the ruling planet of Scorpio. Pluto being the higher octave of Mars. Okay, with this moon in Scorpio opposing this Mars and Taurus, this is this is a trigger uh, activating when Mars squared Pluto. So there can be some deep shit that really comes to the surface today. But what's important and I think is beautiful, even though when things get tense, because the weekend was wild, it was a little all over the place, maybe spaced out, <laughs> hard to really grasp onto reality. And I'm really feeling that more and more with Neptune here at the last degree of Pisces. But, you know, when things get triggered, things get tense, emotions and feelings and opinions and, you know, you physically get stuck, you emotionally get stuck, you know, this is where that kind of starts to break apart. And that's going to keep happening. This kind of fixed energy where thing, when, when you get fixed, you know, you get stuck and all that kind of um, stubborn energy. When that, when, what's going to keep happening over these next few weeks going into to July when Mars gets closer to Uranus? It's going to be like that physical stuck energy is just going to keep getting splattered and it's going to keep getting shaken up and, you know, taking you out of your comfort zones, you know, and exposing you. I think there's a lot of exposure here. This moon squares Pluto today, and the moon oppose, opposes Mars. A lot of exposure of kind of like that, that X-ray vision, right? Mercury's in Cancer now, so like our intuition and our psychic nature is very, very high. Very high. Um, and you know, this can bring on a lot, a lot of reflection, too, of like, damn, like... Whenever you do get stuck and when you do get fixed, it's kind of like it takes you into the same old pattern and the same old loop, and you kind of have to restart just to get yourself out of it. And I think today this can really expose, um, even in a relationship, just kind of the reflection point of how, how you actually physically go about your day right like if, if you're getting stuck throughout the day and you're getting and you don't even realize it on an unconscious level like this moon opposing mars today after it squares pluto it's like people around you and the relationships that you're in or in your environment it's like people can really reflect back to you your own self okay it's like oh do i really act that way like that's moon opposing mars it's like you looking at other people like questioning yourself like do i act like that like I think that's a valid question today, but you know, there's a lot of understanding and empathy and sensitivity coming through here with this Venus and Mercury and Cancer, and we've kind of needed that for a while. <laughs> Gemini season has been so heady and so mental, and it'll be good to kind of get back into this more watery, sensitive space, um, which can be very beautiful. It can be very creative, um, and I'm glad that Mercury and Venus are making their conjunction at, in Cancer, <laughs> uh, not, in, not in Gemini. Or at least, bef you know, after they're squared to Neptune. <laughs> um, the, the sun is still building on towards its square to Neptune. So there's still some confusion. There's still some misunderstanding. There's still some things that are not clear. But now that Venus and Cancer moved on together, and uh, uh, Venus and Mercury have moved on, together in cancer you know it is like we're starting to uh, understand the more emotional side of things you know we've really been trying to logically put things together and analyze both sides of things now we can start to take that understanding and turn it into some sort of mental flow and not be so overly stimulated and not know where to put the energy now the dam can kind of break and allow the energy to flow um, so 
it'll be good to start to move back into that space um mm -hmm. which we haven't been at I mean, since pisces season and we're only a few days away here from the sun moving into cancer so and then we're gonna have that capricorn full moon and that capricorn full moon um is happening with pluto and aquarius and before you know it here and just a Two months, maybe, Pluto's going to be all the way back in, well, not all the way, but it's going to be at 29 degrees of Capricorn once again. So this is the final power grab. This is the final moment of the structure that we've been recreating over these past few years, really since that Saturn-Jupiter-Pluto south node conjunction this this has been like a, a reconstruction you know even from what we built since 2008 and how things started to fall away because that south node um in capricorn with the jupiter saturn uh or saturn pluto conjunction uh, in 2020 you know really broke down a lot of what we thought we were building and creating that was really based on an illusion and now the things since then we've kind of restructured things and a whole new understanding of how the world's functioning of you know the kind of matrix programming that we've been locked into that we've been all slowly it's been slow you know it's capricorn it moves slow <clears throat> but we've been slowly deprogramming and starting to come to a more truer self and i think chiron and aries has had a lot to do with that as well especially in the second half of chiron and aries that's what i've noticed is more of that deprogramming of what our true identity or what we thought our true identity was now that deprogramming is kind of allowing us to fall into a more um, true personal identity and you know Addressing the identity crisis that I think culturally we've kind of been going through in a lot of ways. What do we got today? We have the two of wands. So, you know, it's like it is. We still have the sun in Gemini. Okay. But with Mercury and Venus moving into Cancer, there is this more emotional sensitivity that's starting to come through. You know, it's coming from such a mental transit with the sun and mercury and venus and Taurus. things have been so mental and even a little confusing with neptune being involved and definitely testy with saturn <clears throat> so it's like today we're in between two worlds we're only days away from the sun coming into cancer um now that venus and mercury are there you know it's like we are in two worlds we're in the the mental and the physical at the same time today so it is and i think too in Gemini season, you know, it's easy to kind of lose touch with the, the emotional side of things. So it is that bridge from Gemini season to Cancer season where we kind of in our, we are in both worlds. And that's what Gemini teaches us too, is to come into that more mental space so we can analyze the emotions, you know, from a more lo logical, rational perspective, which in Aries and Taurus isn't always easy to do, right? Because it's so personal. It's you. It's... Through your, you know, through your eyes and through your senses. And Aries and Taurus is just you experiencing reality through your body, through your senses, through your instincts, through your emotions, right? And when we get to Gemini, it's like now we can start to mentalize and understand. And when we get to Cancer season, it is taking a whole new emotional understanding in a whole new direction based upon that new emotional understanding. And we're getting towards summer here in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the north, then, you know, happy winter if you are in the south. So, anyway, like I said, I only have three slots for the reading sale. So, if you want to jump on that, go to the, the link in the description of this video. Um, and, yeah, I would do that ASAP. So, I want to say one more thing. Uh... I appreciate everybody being patient. I, I, I've been trying to do uh, the sun signs and I had to cancel with Frankie two weeks in a row, just life shit. So 
I'm going to get back on track this week. I'm finally getting caught up, and I have an intern who started with me two weeks ago, and he has saved my ass in many ways. <laughs> the things that, because I'm doing so much throughout the day, and there are other things that I want to get to that I haven't been able to get to that I need to check off the list to expand everything else. And that would have taken me probably a month and he knocked out things that would have taken me a month and three days while I was doing other things. So there are big blessings coming through and, you know, I'm not the best to ask for help. I wasn't asking for help. This dude just showed up on my door. The day the Venus Jupiter conjunction happened, which that conjunction happened on my ascendant. It was coming out of my 12th house because my ascent is 29 degrees, right? So that Venus Jupiter happened at 29, 28, 29. It was right on my ascendant. And, you know, I've been going through a lot of really special, amazing things right now. It's a lot. I have no time. I'm not sleeping well. My health is fucking <laughs> at its worst right now. But at the front of the studio, like, I, I'm walking out the door to talk on the phone because there's not windows in here, so I like to go outside and talk on the phone if I can. And I'm walking out, and there's some dude standing there. He's like, hey, is this a recording studio? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, He's like, I want to. Uh, I need an internship. And I'm like, you know, usually it's like, hey, I ain't got time. Fuck off, you know. But the fact that I knew the astrology that day, I'm like, wow, like, today's, you know. And then I'm like, you know, somebody's willing to just knock on the door and ask for a fucking job. Like, I'm going to give him the time of day, right? And I brought him in. We talked for like an hour, and I wasn't sure about it, but, you know, he was very persistent. And I was like, you know what? Let's see how it goes. And it's been really fucking great. So it is like, you know, all the right things, all the right people always show up. You know, if you're seeking with that south node in Libra, well, it might take you down a place you don't want to be or connect with somebody you don't really want to be with or keep playing out the same patterns in relationships. You know, but it is trusting that, you know, when you do what you love and you just put out that frequency, you know, not trying to please other people or trying to seek things, right? All the right things come toward you. And they always do. Every time, at the right time. It's always at the right time. It's always at the perfect time. Even when it feels like it isn't, it always is. So anyway, have a wonderful Monday, and I will see you on Tuesday. Peace out.